Hi guys, it is a gorgeous moonlit but a little bit smoky night tonight here. What, 2,000 miles from those apocalyptic wildfires in Canada here and bugs in a jar farm or should I say rats in a grill farm where uh, we have been barbecuing rats in the, in the grill. Uh, boy, what a day. A crazy day. It is the waning hours of the merry month of May here. We have less than two hours left on May 31st. So the uh, summer of 2023 can move into earnest. Uh, good Lord, it is pretty much 90 degrees today, tomorrow, Friday here in upstate New York and we have been screening in porches to keep all sorts of bugs out of tiny houses that's another rat for another day <clears throat> but uh, we're going to do what we do here on Collapse Chronicles and we're going to chronicle the collapse of a planet and as I always do now we're going to hear a couple of quotes about overpopulation, which is really what this channel is about, since everything we're going to be talking about in tonight's rant is a direct, nothing indirect about it. Nothing indirect. Okay? A direct result of too many human beings on the planet. So to kick off this rant, here, here we go. How about John D. Rockefeller, described as a business magnate who died in 1937 when the population of this planet was, what, one-fourth of what it is today? You know, John D. Rockefeller, uh, often uh, held up by the Alex Jones population, overpopulation denier crowd as one of the major architects of the New World Order's depopulation agenda. Well, I gotta say that JD failed miserably in his depopulation agenda, but he would give the man credit for trying. Quote, the population problem must be recognized by government as a principal element in long range planning. But of course, the population problem being recognized by governments about a hundred years after he said this was, you know, more and more governments, I would say the majority of governments on the planet, trying to get more people to have more babies to save the economy. It's called short-range planning. But next to uh, J.D. Rockefeller, what is philosopher Bertrand Russell, who died in 1970, what was on his mind before he died 53 years ago? Quote, the one real remedy is birth control. That is, getting the people of the world to limit themselves to numbers which they can keep upon their own soil. Yes. So we're going to uh, check out how well J.D. Rockefeller and Bertrand Russell uh, succeeded and uh, so we have a new study out. Oh, good old Seth Borenstein from Associated Press. I've read several articles from this guy, Seth Borenstein, in this article. Earth is really quite sick now. Hmm. And in the danger zone in nearly all ecological ways, study says. And they have an Excellent, uh, the photo editor, good old 
AP has done an excellent job of getting some photos together of what this planet looks like, uh, you know, here in the 21st century because there's too goddamn many people on the planet. I'll just show you one of these. If you can see this, what do you think this is a picture of? Uh, if your picture is the Amazon rainforest, give yourself a gold star. Uh, that is what the Amazon, what too many humans on this planet have done to the single greatest biological, biologically diverse Garden of Eden on the planet. They have incinerated it. Okay, take it away, Seth Borenstein. Earth has pushed past seven out of eight scientifically established safety limits. This is not the same list as the nine planetary boundaries. Do not, do not. Uh, confuse, as I first did, the nine planetary boundaries with the eight scientifically established safety limits. And we are now into the danger zone, not just for an overheating planet that's losing its natural areas, but for the well-being of people living on it according to a new study. The study looks not just at guardrails for the planetary ecosystem. Yes, guardrails for the planetary ecosystem. Ah, but for the first time, it includes measures of, quote, justice, which is mostly about preventing harm for countries, ethnicities, and genders. So, uh, you know, the, the lefties are kind of infiltrating this report, the social justice warriors, or, or, or in any way, uh, we won't spend much time there. Oh, I see uh, two related stories. Could I have written this right here in Ithaca, New York? Wildfires in Canada affecting air quality in major U.S. cities. And Canada's wildfires are so bad, they're messing with air quality in the U.S., which has something to do with air pollution, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay. The study by the International Scientist Group Earth Commission, published in Wednesday's journal Nature, looks at climate, air pollution, phosphorus and nitrogen contamination of water from fertilizer overuse, groundwater supplies, fresh surface water, the unbuilt natural environment, and the overall natural and human-built environment. Only air pollution was not quite at the danger point globally, you know, which they have that right directly next to this photo. I'm not sure which city this is wildfires in Canada affecting air quality in major U.S. cities is right next to the sentence, only air pollution wasn't quite at the danger point globally. Air pollution is dangerous at local and regional levels, you know, stretching from Alberta to New York over 2,000 miles, you know, those kind of local and regional levels spreading across entire countries. So air pollution is dangerous at local and regional levels, while climate was beyond the harmful levels for humans in groups, but 
not quite past the safety guideline for the planet as a system, the study from the Swedish group said. Huh. The study found hot spots of problem areas throughout Eastern Europe, South Asia, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, parts of Africa, yeah, like the, the, nearly all parts other than the Sahara Desert, maybe, those parts of Africa, and much of Brazil, Mexico, China, and do not forget some of the U.S. West, much of that from climate change. About two-thirds of Earth don't meet the, I think that's, does not meet, is two-thirds of Earth don't meet or does not meet the criteria for fresh water safety, scientists said as an example. All right. <clears throat> so this is study co-author Christy Ebby, a professor of climate and public health at the University of Washington. Quote, we are in a danger zone for most of the Earth system boundaries. Yep. If planet Earth just got an annual checkup similar to a person's physical, quote, our doctor would say that the Earth is really quite sick now, and it is sick in terms of many areas or systems, and this sickness is also affecting the people living on Earth, which is what's called uh, payback. It's called karma. It's called getting everything that humans deserve, is another way of saying this. Uh, that was Earth Com Commission co-chair Joyita Gupta, a professor at, of environment at the University of Amsterdam. So humans are causing problems for humans. Hmm. But of course, is it already time to bring out the hopium? Usually they, they, they get a little bit longer. Usually Seth, you can usually count on Seth you know, to get to the last uh, 10 to 15 percent before firing up the hopium pipe. But he's already doing it. Uh, Seth is already firing up the hopium pipe. It's not a terminal diagnosis. The planet can recover if it changes, hmm, including its use of coal, oil, and natural gas, and the way it treats the land and water, the scientists said. Yes, the planet can recover, so Earth can recover if it, meaning the planet, changes its use of coal and the way it treats the land and water, it has nothing to do with the humans living on the planet. So we can go about our business. It is the planet itself uh, that it is all the planet's fault. This is, this is not human's fault. This is the planet's fault. It is the planet's fault uh, that the Earth is in a terminal diagnosis. Makes good sense to me. Okay, so, uh, oh, Johan Rockstrom weighing in. Yes, what does Johan Rockstrom say about this? We are moving in the wrong direction on basically all of these, meaning these eight danger zones. And then he is joined by Indy Burke, Dean of the Yale School of the Environment, who was not part of the study, said, quote, 
This is a compelling and provocative paper, scientifically sound in methodology and important for identifying the dimensions in which the planet is nearing the edge of boundaries that would launch us into irreversible states. Don't, don't you love this word salad? I think, uh, didn't Vegematic, didn't you, uh, did, Veg, didn't you recently make a video about Doomer word salad? I think this, this is one of the greatest Doomer word salads I have read. Yes. Identifying the dimensions in which the planet is nearing the edge of boundaries that would launch us into irreversible states. How about we were launched into irreversible states in about 1970 is when this planet, uh, maybe in 1970, the planet was nearing the edge of boundaries we have completely busted through those boundaries, and, and I don't know why they limited this to eight I, I, any more than those nine planetary boundaries. I, I guess that makes 17 between the two of them. Anyway, the team of about 40 scientists created quantifiable boundaries for each environmental category, both for what is safe for the planet and for the point at which it becomes harmful for groups of people. It's all about the humans, which the researchers, researchers termed a justice issue. A justice issue, uh, you, you know, a, a human justice issue. Uh, Rockstrom said he thinks of those points as setting up a safety fence outside of which the risks become higher, but not necessarily fatal. Yeah. Um, Rockstrom and other scientists have attempted in the past this type of holistic measuring of Earth's various interlocking ecosystems. The big difference in this attempt is that scientists also looked at local and regional levels and they added the element of justice. I'm not going to uh, waste our time on talking this lefty social justice warrior gobbledygook. Um, then uh, they talk about, uh, all right, let's get in to some of the climate doom. Uh, talking to, this is quoting this fellow Gupta, what we are trying to show through our paper is that even at one degree Celsius, otherwise known as 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit, there is a huge amount of damage taking place, Gupta said, pointing to tens of millions of people, including me in the garden in the past two days, exposed to extreme hot temperatures. I know how those people feel. <clears throat> the planetary safety guardrail of one and a half degrees has not been reached yet, but the just boundary where people are hurt of one degree has been. Yes. Uh, Let's see, this is Chris, environmental, Stanford Environmental Studies Chief Chris Fielder wasn't part of the research, said he 
would want even more stringent boundaries. Unsafe conditions do not need to cover a large fraction of Earth's area to be unacceptable, especially if the unsafe conditions are concentrated in and near poor and vulnerable communities. Yes. And here we go. I, see, this is why I like Seth. At least he, he, uh, he doesn't mind e ending his article. So he brings out the uh, hopium, but I do like this ending. Another outside expert, Dr. Lynn Goldman, an environmental health professor and dean of George Washington University's public health school, said the study was, quote, kind of bold, but she was not optimistic that it would result in much action. <laughs> Do you think so, lady? Was not optimistic that one more study of uh, the state of this planet will not result in much action. It will result in no action whatsoever on any level. It will be one more of these studies that maybe the 20 people who listen to this rant, uh, it will stick with you uh, until your next cute cat video. Uh, I'm going to wrap up this rant. Uh, within five minutes, I will have my mind on something, you, you know, uh, like some uh, how to return a, uh, a solar panel to uh, Amazon.com for my refund. I'm yanking the solar panels off of my tiny house roof going back to the grid. Um, will be a lot bigger concern to me uh, about how to get a refund from Amazon.com uh, uh, on these goddamn solar panels than the fact uh, that seven out of eight of the planet's safety boundaries have been breached. Uh, I will never think of this again uh, when I turn off this camera, and neither will you. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog.